Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar, New Year, New Changes, the ABCs to Daily Living with MS. My name is Ann Lee, and I'm the Senior Specialist of Programs and Online Education for Can Do Multiple Sclerosis, and I'll be your moderator this evening. If you guys don't already know who we are, uh, Can Do MS is an innovative provider of lifestyle empowerment programs for people who live with MS and for their support partners. We empower people to actively co-manage their disease and move beyond their MS by adopting active and healthy lifestyle behaviors by programs such as webinars and our in-person programs. And so to give you a little bit of info about our programs, um, we have webinars that you're on right now. Um, you can visit our website at www.mscando.org to find out more information about all these programs. Uh, you can also listen to our recorded and archived webinars. And you can learn about our in-person programs. We have our flagship four-day jump or I'm sorry, our four-day can do program, our one-day jump start programs, and our two and a half day take charge programs. So please visit our website to find out all of our program dates for 2014. You can also find us on social media. Uh, we have a Facebook page where you'll find all kinds of up-to-date information about our upcoming programs and events. Uh, you can also find us on Pinterest. LinkedIn, and Twitter. And if you find us on, our, on YouTube, uh, you can find uh, recorded webinars um, going back to 2010. And so just a few housekeeping issues um, to go over before we start tonight's webinar. We will save 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the webinar for your questions and answers. Um, and so to ask a question, you can chat them into us directly to the presenters and to myself in the chat feature on the bottom left-hand uh, corner or box in your screen. So just type in your questions and hit send, and we will get those. Um, so again, we will save those questions for the end of the program. And uh, this program is being recorded, um, so all of your phone lines are on mute, so we will not be able to hear, um, hear you if you are asking a question um, audibly. So before we get started, I would like to introduce our presenters for the evening. Um, Denise Nowak, RD, is a nutritionist and certified fitness instructor in Santa Monica, California. For more than 30 years, Denise has designed and provided health and nutrition education programs to individuals, community health organizations, fitness facilities, corporations, medical centers, and universities. She lectures nationwide and also conducts professional education workshops and symposia for physicians, dietitians, nurses, and fitness professionals. Over the past 18 years, she has focused her work on those who are living with multiple sclerosis. As the Executive Vice President of Chapter Programs for Services and Advocacy with the Southern California and Nevada Chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, she has established and coordinated programs that promote wellness and healthy living for people with MS. Denise is the author of Food for Thought and is a contributing author for the Healthy Living section of Momentum Magazine. And our next presenter is Ann Molinix. She is an occupational therapist of 26 years living in Minneapolis. She has been a can-do MS program consultant for 20 years. Ann just recently resigned from Methodist Hospital Park Nicolette after 25 years working in neurological rehabilitation to pursue schooling at the University of Minnesota for a degree in integrative health and wellness coaching. Anne will continue to work with individuals with MS using a holistic perspective to improve health and well-being, helping people achieve these goals, their goals. Anne also devotes her time to co-leading support groups for head injury, implementing preventive injury training programs for young athletes, and mentoring young single mothers. Anne is a wife to Scott and a mother of three teenage children who keep her extremely busy. And so now I would like to welcome Denise and Anne to our program. And so Anne, take it away. Thanks a lot, Anne. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being at Can Do's first webinar of 2014. You know, the start of a new year is a time that gives us all a reason to pause and reflect to make changes, improve our lives in some way. We make resolutions, and I think you can fill in the blanks from there. Denise and I didn't want to take that route of giving you a talk about how to make resolutions and stick with them. We thought we wanted to do something more empowering, and we wanted to create a talk with the intention of empowering and energizing to help you, our listeners, make the most of your days 
to lessen the impact of MS on a daily basis to be able to increase a focus on you, your passions, your interests, your hope. We will talk about practical strategies during this next hour. Some of them you have heard before. But these are strategies that you can incorporate right now. You can use tomorrow. You can use six months from now. You can use throughout the whole year, not just to start and stop, to keep on moving and get more of you back into your life and less of the MS. So our objectives with you today are the following. To determine what happens with MS that gets in the way of living. To adopt strategies that enhance manageability of MS in everyday life. And to make choices that empower and energize. Through our experience as professionals working with individuals with MS with knowledge of the disease, we know that MS brings uncertainties and can add elements of chaos into your daily life. I think many of you may agree that living with MS may have changed your course of direction without intention. Although life is never certain, living with MS gets in the way of everyday life, taking away a bit of who we are, feeling drained, loss of control, and while life is a little different from what our expectations may have set out to be, an MS can have a way of sabotaging us, can it? With this in mind, we want to go, before we continue with our talk and talking about strategies, we would like you to answer a polling question. So this question, if it's hard to read, it says, what happens when MS gets in the way of everyday life? And so we're going to ask you to click on um, one or two of these items here. Um, the first box is fatigue. Um, the second is feeling overwhelmed. Uh, the third is physical limitations, uh, cognitive changes, lack of support or resources, or fear. So go ahead and click on one or two things that really get in the way of your everyday life with MS. We're going to give a little time here for everyone to uh, plug in their answers. And I think we're just about there. So as we look at it, I don't think it's really a surprise, you know, um, certainly that fatigue is something that gets in the way of everyday life. But if we look at the others, um, certainly um, physical changes and limitations that come as a result of f physical changes. And, and also just um, the other top two after that, you know, cognitive changes and just feeling overwhelmed. Um, and so as we look at our presentation today and as we walk through these strategies, um, really what we're hoping to leave you with is a little bit of a toolkit, um, some ideas that you can use, as Anne said, each and every day, when you need it, um, any time throughout your year, or life with MS. So you know, off we go. Let's take a look at our ABCs. Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Denise. Yeah, it was interesting. I think working 25 years with MS, Fatigue is always the dominant symptom people come in, even if they're having other symptoms, we're always working on fatigue management. It just doesn't seem to go away, does it? So keep in mind, any symptom that was presented or symptoms that you may have that we didn't talk about on that slide, all these tips we're going to be approaching with you have the ability to affect and lessen the impact of these symptoms in your daily life. And as we're going through this um, talk, I just want to make clear that these are various tips. And they're in order because of how we place them in terms of just our presentation of ABCs. But it doesn't necessarily mean that there is a rhyme or reason to when we say the, the tips. But the common denominator, the common thread with each of these tips is helping you gain 
more focus on yourself in your day because you're managing your symptoms better. And these are tips that Denise and I have found to be very successful over the years working with people with MS. So that's why we want to share with them with you today. So A, let's get going, is not just for Apple, it's for adapt your approach. Don't let MS get in the way, take charge. And if you've ever been to a can-do program, that's part of our philosophy, is taking control of what you can and letting go of what you can't. Now change is something that's desired by all of us in certain ways, and it's not so easy in other ways. But change doesn't just happen. We can't just think about something and expect it to take place. We do have to be mentally and emotionally engaged for different things to happen in our life. So our first slide, adapting, we want to make your daily activities easier and more achievable by, number one, just thinking differently, being more flexible, more creative, being problem solvers. This will allow you to be able to do more in your days. And what I mean by that are some simple, simple strategies. Planning ahead. If you're going out in the community, know what the accessibility is. Know where the bathrooms are located. If you want a grocery shop but it's very fatiguing, use a scooter. The point here is realizing what is your desire, your end result. How are you going to get there may be a different process, but you're still going to get there. So being open to a change of process, knowing that you're going to get where you want to be. Another way to adapt your approach is taking advantage of tools, or we call it adaptive equipment. There is a piece of equipment to help you do pretty much anything to be honest, out there. And what I mean by that are adaptive equipment are different tools that are used by individuals if there's weakness, if there's a decrease maybe in um, dexterity or coordination, and change in balance. They allow people to continue to be independent. And I want to make that clear. They allow independence. They don't take away independence. A good example of that is using a walker, for instance. I know that is a process of accepting for some people, but using a walker can allow you to get out to a movie versus feeling isolated and restricted because you're afraid to walk in a public place because your balance is very uncertain. Adaptive equipment help you maintain independence. Also, looking at how you arrange your home. It could be simple changes in your home that allow more independence, getting activities done easier with less amount of energy by just changing around how you locate items or where things are placed, in cupboards and shelves or whatever. Rearranging furniture, putting a chair in the middle of a hallway for that time where you need to sit down as you're trying to get from your kitchen to the bedroom. Simple changes like that. Also, larger changes could be making your home more accessible by widening doorways, installing grab bars in a bathroom, um, <clears throat> putting a ramp outside for easier access. If these are um, points that you feel you could benefit from and yet you still don't really know how you would go about doing it, I do suggest you talk to your doctor and get a referral for a rehabilitation specialist, an occupational therapist, a physical therapist. They do home evaluations, and this is their specialty to come in your home and tell you some changes that can make things easier. Or adaptive equipment, or if some activities are difficult and you want to continue to do them and you're not sure how to go about that, a therapist can help you make those changes and allow you to be successful. Let's go on to B, bring back activities you love. Remember, we're focusing on you with this talk. The more you do that has meaning, gives you energy. Activities we love fill us with energy. Activities we don't drain our energy. Reclaim who you are. And how do we do this? Well, think about an interest that you have done in your past that you've slowly let go of due to maybe MS getting in the way. 
Or if these are uh, activities you don't really care to bring back into your life, but it's something that you need in your life. You need a hobby. You need an outlet. You need to have more fun. You need to be more relaxed. You need to stop thinking about MS all the time. Then take time to do a self-exploration. Know what your talents, your skills, your interests, what you value. You know, talents that we have are skills that you learn with little or no effort. These are the activities you engage in that you don't keep, keep track of time because you're enjoying it. These are activities that you're drawn to, maybe what you read, what you are drawn to in the newspaper, on TV. <clears throat> Think about, take time to think about what is important to you. And understanding your values also helps motivate you and will draw you into activities that are important. You know, and these may include volunteering, taking a class, support groups, mentoring. There are a lot of different self evaluations you could find if you Google it online that can, inventories that can help you figure things out if you're not sure. Another route you could take are going to a variety of different professionals. There's health coaches, there are life coaches, there are career coaches. These are individuals that can help navigate you if you're ready for something new but you just don't know how to get there. C, our tip for C is change for the better. Increase your success. Get more out of your day by Number one, changing the way you manage your time. Use a daily planner. Write activities down, giving them specific time slots or amounts. And I tell you, I guarantee if you use this, you will better manage your time and be able to fit in and incorporate the activities that you have more passion for. It's really easy. Even if it's an activity that you don't love or enjoy, isn't it hard to manage your time sometimes and get something done? That can just suck so much energy from us, as well as we have those days that maybe we have less structure and not a lot on our plate to do. Those are activities that really can waste time very quickly, right? They go by so fast, and you think, what did I do today? Really taking an effort to write things down and put those activities that are more meaningful, that are your priority in the time in your day that you have the most energy to do them. Scheduling activities allows you to have an ending point and the ability to move on better to other activities. No matter how small these activities are, if you write them down, you're going to succeed more in getting things done. Taking breaks is also really important. Maybe dividing up an activity that you do a part of today or another part of tomorrow. Taking breaks may take longer, but if your end result is to have a result, you'll get there. You're just going about it a little differently. And let go of unrealistic expectations. Does your home have to be that clean, right? Let go of some of the day-to-day -day expectations so you can really incorporate activities that give you a little bit more energy and passion. It is really easy to get caught up in what should be done. But if you take a step back and evaluate, it doesn't necessarily have to be done. Another idea is change the way you complete an activity. Can you perform it in a different room? Can you put most of your living in the one level room so you're not going up and down the stairs all day long? As well as your work environment, can you simplify it so you're walking and moving less if necessary? Can you stick to do more activities versus standing? Some of that is kind of common sense. You're just kind of forced into doing some of that and you don't even realize that you are making an activity easier because you're realizing the best that your body will perform with that activity. Can activities be modified or delegated? Delegated, so much we take on. Can you give it to a family member? Can you hire out? Can you let go of some of those activities that don't create that meaning to give you more space in your days? And also think about changing your physical environment. Is it energy efficient? Look at the temperature of your environment. As you know, a lot of you, it can be very heat sensitive. It can make a big effect on draining your energy, right? Look at the temperature. Look at the lighting. Is it well lit if you're trying to read and accomplish something at your, your workstation, for instance? 
Do you have a lot of distractions around you? Are there a lot of noises? That can take a lot of energy because you have to focus and concentrate so much harder on a task. Eliminate the distractions. Calm your nervous system down. Be more efficient at getting through your days. And also, changing your physical environment to minimize the risk of falling. I mentioned earlier, setting a chair maybe in a location that you can sit as needed. I know people like to use walls to help support them as they're moving around, thinking about using adaptive equipment to make you more efficient. But we don't need a fall, right? I think, though, and the, the truth also remains here that there are and will continue to be days, no matter how well you are prepared for an activity, your body will say no. And this is life, and it happens. And don't be discouraged. Just move on. This is a great segue. When we're talking about our physical environment, we decided to make a full slide about clutter. Clutter is a big Thing, isn't it? It's everything that is distracting you from the important things in your life. It can involve physical chaos and disorganization, but it also can be things like worrying, arguing, overscheduling, overeating, debt, overwhelmed by paperwork, or feeling like a victim and having pity parties for yourself. Clutter distracts us from the important things. It can be an excuse to take on challenges. That's a good, not an interesting point. I like that. So how are we going to conquer the clutter? Our recommendations are, number one, start with a plan. You can take a room-by-room -room approach or make a priority list and start with what poses the greatest risk to your well-being. Be sure to plan around your fatigue levels. If you experience fatigue in the afternoon, plan to work in the morning. You can work for short bursts of time as little as 15 minutes a day will eventually get the job done. Another way to conquer the clutter is to clear your surfaces. Go through your home with a trash bag in hand. Put items that you no longer need or want in the bag. Find at least one cluttered surface and completely clear it. And then that's it for the day. And have a goal the next day or the next week to do one more. You know, if you've looked through that magazine once or a newspaper, go recycle it. You know, you really probably won't get back to that again. How many times do we keep magazines thinking we're going to reread them? You know, those fill up fast, okay? Another thing you can do is determine really what is needed. Again, we're talking about prioritizing items that you are debating if you want to keep or not. So think of it in this way. <clears throat> On a scale from 1 to 10, how important is this item to you and the life you want to be living? If it rates a 10, then it may be worth hanging on to. It is normal to be afraid of throwing something out that you may want later. But ask yourself, are these things that are taking my time or space very important to me or are they not? Are they preventing me from enjoying the things I want more? And put clutter in its place. You know, we scatter things around our home. An idea is to take a bag with handles and just have another goal of going around your home, picking up things that are not in the right place, putting them back to where they should be. And there are so many different inexpensive organizers for anything that you want to get them out of your way. Again, clutter, balance, falls. You know, when we clear our desk, I mean, our mind clears. It's, it's, it's weightlifting. So putting things in storage containers, all sorts of boxes, baskets, anything, you name it, can help clean your environment and help you um, conquer that clutter. E, energize your work environment. You know, this could be a talk all in itself. So I can't get too detailed with looking at work environment. Some of our listeners here can feel very challenged by their work. But let's just break it down and put some bullet points to think about. The first thing is keeping up with your work. You know, your work environment offers endless challenges. A way to keep up with it is going back to the word that I've mentioned before is prioritizing delegating, 
using electronic organizers, setting alarms to keep yourself on schedule, decrease your distractions, close the door. If you don't have a door to close and you work in a cubicle, wear a headset, have some type of system work that you can maybe even create a nonverbal communication that you are not to be disturbed. If you can have little chunks of time to get through a specific task, it will get you on to the next task. But writing things down, telling people, I'll get back to you on that, using the organizers can help you feel that your mind isn't spinning and you have all the mind clutter and you can't seem to get things done. Keeping comfortable <clears throat> is also very important. Everyone is, that sits at a desk needs to have an ergonomic setup, meaning you have to have good positioning in your chair and how it is set up to your, to your desk, to your computer, uh, handless uh, ear sets. There is a wealth of materials and items out there to make you comfortable at your workstation. If you're not sure if you have that or not, go to your human resources and there's someone there that can help you with an ergonomic evaluation. If your work doesn't have human resources, meaning you're small, ask your doctor, again, to have an evaluation by a therapist, physical therapist, occupational therapist. It's their specialty to go into your office and tell you how you can make things more comfortable, more ergonomically correct, to save energy, to help you focus, and help you get your job done. And keep it going. And what we mean by that is we want you to keep problem solving, you know, find a new way if it's not working, maybe ask for feedback from your coworkers. You know, can you get tasks done differently? Can your office space be moved to be at a place that's more accommodating for you? Uh, know your work right. It's very important. Deal with stress or when you're feeling a little anxious or overwhelmed. Have immediate techniques on hand like deep breathing or listening to music, putting headsets on. Take breaks throughout your day. Stretch. Always give yourself a break if you're looking at that computer for the majority of your job. Little things will add up in giving you more of a sound mind and more peace of mind and energizing you to be more proficient with your work. You know, and that's a great segue, Anne, because finding your focus is critical in everyday life, not just at work. And so, you know, all the same strategies that Anne just pointed out in the workplace certainly are key in other aspects of our life. Um, and so the next few ideas that we're going to share really are focused on some of the cognitive uh, challenges that, that you might face and trying to find some strategies to overcome some of those. And, and starting first with limiting distractions. Um, and distractions really can take us off focus and cause us to lose attention, um, whether it be in a project or, or um, in um, uh, bill paying or whatever activity we're involved with. So think about limiting visual distractions. You know, remove any unnecessary items from this, the space you're working in. Um, if you are making dinner at the counter and it's cluttered with bills and magazines and everything, um, it, it, it's easy to get very distracted and not have the room to focus on on what you you need to. Um, select a location um, that's that's. Um, free of distracting things like windows or televisions or, or certain lights. Um, you know, I, I talked about bill paying, and, and that's one area where, that might require more focus. And so living those visual distractions can be really critical to staying on focus. Um, limit noise distractions. You know, try to minimize the interruptions that your environment can bring to you, um, and, and that can set you up for success. So really create kind of a quiet space that's free from noise or controlled noise. Um, some people um, work better with, with music um, and, and are able to focus better. Um, and if you really need that quiet time, share that information with your family and friends. Let them know you're going to close the door um, and that you need 30 minutes 
minutes to, to, to focus in on a, a task that's important to you. Um, and, and once you've begun the activity, it's very important to stay on focus all the way through. And, and so some of these other strategies come into place. Um, Anne talked about making comfort a priority, so I won't go into that much more. Um, but let's say you are engaged with others in a conversation at a party um, across the dinner table. Um, Remaining engaged in a conversation um, can help you stay focused as well. Um, even responses such as, really? You know, I, I see. I see. Tell me more. Um, it, it helps you process the information that you're taking in and then um, re-engage back with the, the, the people you are working with. And, and these phrases help um, in the flow of conversation and help you remain attentive in the conversation as well. Um, organize your tasks, and Anne shared some ideas already on, on how you can organize your tasks. And in a minute, I'm going to share with you a strategy on, on how to make a plan. Plans are just great, and there are a lot of different um, resources that can help you with that. But stay tuned. I've got something good to share forward. Um, and sometimes distractions are inevitable. And so you know, um, despite all your efforts in gain gaining and maintaining focus, um, you might feel your mind wander. You might feel overwhelmed. Um, change your activity. You know, change it up a little bit. Give yourself a break. Um, change the routine for a minute before returning to the task. And this will allow you to refocus. G, gather your thoughts. And this is a great way, again, you know, if it's hard for you to um, express yourself, um, if it's hard for you to get your ideas out, sometimes you have to slow down to move forward. Uh, and so slow down and examine the situation um, and, and pull your thoughts together. Um, if you're able to organize your ideas before you enter into a conversation or tasks, it helps you um, be more engaged and more connected to the conversation as well. Um, and you want to consider the steps you take before proceeding, you know, and, and, and you'll have the confidence then in moving forward. H is have a plan. Um, you'll hear plans being talked about at a variety of different points in, in this presentation. You know, there are plans in your everyday activity. What are you going to eat? You know, there are plans that are longer term plans. You know, how do, how do I pull the plans together and organize things? And, and plans, planning and organization can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if they're things like big projects. And you know, I had the pleasure of working with a speech pathologist who really understood MS quite well. And, and she calls this her mind map. And she takes an activity that she, she wants to focus in on, and I think we all can relate on planning a trip or a summer vacation. Um, the idea behind the mind map is that you, you put your, the thing you're planning in the center of, your, of your, um, your plan. And then from there, you think about all the different activities that are going to be critical. And you don't have to think of them in a certain order. Just get them out there. And, and, and they're the little tentacles off your, your center of um, center thought. And so if we think about a vacation, we need to um, identify a place we want to go. We need to figure out how we're going to get there. Um, what are we going to take with us? What do we want to see when we get there? Um, who is going to come with us? And what do we have to take care of on the home front before we leave? Once you get your ideas out, then you can go through and prioritize them so it doesn't become too overwhelming. And then if a new um, element comes into play, you can just add that to your map and put that in order. So this is a really great and easy strategy that I find is um, an easy way to think through the steps of a process that can otherwise be overwhelming. I incorporate physical activity daily. Physical activity means movement. It could be activities of everyday life, including household, workspace, lifestyle activities, and it includes exercise, planned and structured, designed to improve one's form of physical fitness. You know, we do know, and I think everyone here can, uh, can attest that You've heard before the positive effects of exercise in your, overall, in your overall well-being. Not only does one benefit from the physical benefits, 
meaning improved strength. When our strength is stronger, we have better tolerance to walking, lifting, etc., or flexibility, mobility. But also, people claim, and the research shows, that their overall perception of life improves. There's a more positive outlook on life, including its challenges. And regular exercise, improved fitness, may help in the, in the um, extent of the relapses, meaning people are in better shape, they are better able to tolerate the effects of a relapse, and they not, may not be as strong. Keeping perceptions positive, I'm sorry, my mouth, I'm drying, I'm kind of flumbling around here. But again, the benefits of exercise are not only physical, but they are mental, emotional as well. Some types of exercises that we use or to keep exercise interesting are aerobic, and some examples are walking, running, biking, and swimming. Strength and endurance exercises are using weights or elastic bands, water resistance, and flexibility exercises are activities such as stretching, yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi. If you are not sure what you should be doing, you should be consulting your doctor because if you're not active, you want to be careful with how you jump into these activities. And to know better what activity would, would be the best for you, a rehabilitation specialist can help determine that for you. But another route you could take is if you live in an area that has an MS chapter, as you notice, if you look through the catalog or go online, there are many different exercise groups specifically for people with MS offered that encompass all of the different exercises I just listed. Denise, you want to start this one? Look good? Feel better? Yes, sometimes feeling good on the inside starts on the outside. And, and I think it's easy to underestimate um, the energy it takes to make personal care a priority. Um, and so some really um, maybe obvious tips, but um, good reminders is, is you know, if, if – if it's hard to get up and get going in the morning and it takes some time to get out, um, plan ahead. Plan the day before what you, what you want to put out. Lay out your, your wardrobe. You know, I do this in, in the morning if I have a, a tight morning. I'll hang out the things I want to wear so it's the last thing I have to deal with um, in, in the morning hours. Um, bathing can be very fatiguing, and especially for individuals who are heat sensitive. Um, um, hot showers, you might not realize, might actually drain you. Um, so keep your cool by turning the temperature down in the showers um, and uh, keep it more temperate. Sometimes it takes a lot of energy to towel off. Um, and the beauty of terry robes is that you can just put a terry robe on and then just press the robe against your body to blot the, the water and, and sort of minimize the amount of energy you spend in, in, in toweling off. Andy, you want to share information about dressing? Yeah, dressing can be exhausting, as you all well know. Sit down to dress, pace yourself, rest after. You know, dress in front of a mirror, and that can help you find the sleeves and line up buttonholes. If you have uh, a change in function in one of your arms, dress that arm first, and then use your stronger arm to finish the dressing of that that side. To undress, you do the opposite. You want to take off your shirt from your stronger arm first, and that would better enable you to take it off from the weaker arm. Little techniques like that can make dressing more efficient. There are a lot of adaptive equipment or tools that can help you with dressing. Button hooks, zipper pulls, Elastic waists are a lot easier than using little fasteners. And I just found out about a fairly new company online. It's called Magna Ready, M-A-G-N-A, 
READY, R-E-A-D-Y. And it specifically is just for dress shirts at this time. And the concept is using a magnet behind the button to align the buttons on the shirt. And they're all dress shirts. The price are around $65. They're beautiful shirts. And they're 100% cotton, wrinkle-free, washer-dryer. Another new concept out there to help people that have some fine motor or dexterity challenges. So I would check that out if you can. And, and making meals easiest is so important. So often I see individuals um, skipping meals, especially towards the end of the day when energy tends to wane. Um, but but nutrition is really important. Um, food's your fuel, and it's really important to keep your energy levels high. And so skipping meals... Um, doesn't serve you well, but making meals easy um, can help you keep good nutrition as part of a priority. So what I encourage people to do is kind of focus your effort. If you're going to spend your time on anything, perhaps spend it on the main entree, and then you can use things that are ready to to, to prepare um, that you can buy and just pop into the microwave. And you know nowadays um, there's some great quick cooking grains um, that you can have in the freezer and then throw in the microwave or they come in little pouches that, that 90 seconds in the microwave and you've had these wonderful whole grains. A great example. Um, I'm a big fan of also buying ready to use. Um, whoever decided that they were going to shred cheese and make our life that much easier um, is certainly worthy of Nobel Peace Prize in my opinion. But there are many <laughs> things um, that, that can help you cut five to ten minutes um, out of food preparation, things that are pre-chopped and pre-cleaned, like garlic, you know, things like that require a finer dexterity, and, and sometimes that's a little harder. Um, shredded cheeses, um, uh, like I said, the pre-washed, pre-cleaned vegetables and produce, they cost a little more, but your good nutrition is worth it sometimes. Um, keep ingredients on hand. You can keep these things in your refrigerator or freezer or in your cupboards, and you can pull them out when you need them most. Um, I'm a big fan of marinades, and, and um, after our call tonight, I have chicken breasts that I'm going to put a marinade on and just pop in the oven um, for dinner. Um, really, it'll be ready in about 15 minutes um, once it's done. Um, gather your ingredients. You know, you know, you don't have to, you know, run around the kitchen. You know, bring your ingredients together, put it on a cart, take it to the table, sit down and prepare your food. Um, um, it, it saves energy, a lot of energy, in, in the meal preparation process. And you can always enlist the help of others. And finally, the whole idea of cook once, eat twice. You're going to spend the energy cooking. Um, you might as well go ahead and um, package it up and, and tuck it away for a second meal during the week, or um, you can redesign that, the leftovers into a different meal, or you can just pop it in your freezer. Um, the, I love the fact that we have these um, great um, uh, cooking to storage to freezer to oven types of containers that make um, meal preparation that much easier. So um, make meals easy and make that a, a continued part of your everyday life. So nourish your body often. And there is truth to the fact that um, eating constantly um, and throughout the day can absolutely um, help fuel your body. Um, snacks keep energy levels high. And so um, if you think about snacking, what makes a good snack? And it's a little bit of carbohydrate and a little bit of protein and a little bit of fat. Um, think of them as a mini meal. You know, they're about two to 300 calories. And they help us not just um, get the calories that we need, but also the nutrients that we need that we might not get at our meals. Um, it, help keeps, it helps keep it a little interesting too. And, and um, with these calories throughout our day, it also helps us um, in um, getting the calories we need to keep our attention um, and, and focus. So um, snacking is a, a wonderful part of, of your everyday activities as well. 
organize your medical care. Um, you know, you know that MS is complex, and it's really hard to keep track of everything that is going on, um, much less um, uh, you know on a on a day to day basis. So think about it when you're scheduling import appointments. Um, schedule your appointments when your energy level is highest. If your energy level is highest at the beginning of the day. Try to make your appointment, if you have the control over it, the first appointment of the day. Um, write down the questions you have before you go. And you can keep a little diary along, uh, along the way. Um, you know, if your appointment's not but a week or so out, um, you, know, you might have things that come into mind that you want to talk to your healthcare provider about, but you might not remember um, when that time comes. So write down the questions before you, um, you go and, and bring that list with you. Um, when in doubt, when you're at a visit and you don't know what the healthcare provider is talking about, it's okay to ask for an explanation um, and, and bring someone along with you so they can take notes and, and um, can answer questions. Um, and they also can help you in remembering what your healthcare provider was talking about. Um, I don't know about you, but there are many times when I leave an appointment, I absolutely think I understand what the doctor said, but oh darn it, you know, there, there, there's an element, did I remember that correctly? I didn't write it down, but you can have someone with you who can help with that. Put your medical information in place, um, and and this is great to just track the chronology of your your health uh, and your and and your health with MS. Again, you can begin to see trends. Um, you can see how your symptoms might be changing, how they might be getting better, how they might be progressing. Um, but keeping a log or diary of your symptoms and and and. Um, the things you're experiencing can be a valuable tool in your conversations with your healthcare professionals. Um, you know, really, no one knows this information better than you. Um, and try to keep an organized um, medical file. Compile your own medical file. If not a paper file, um, an electronic file that you can go to that you can pull up and, and share with a doctor. I put together a chronology of all the different health issues that I may have, and then when the physician asks, you know, you know, have you ever had a surgery, I'm able to hand them this document and make that a part of their medical record of me. Um, summarize and keep a current chronological list of things like tests and treatments and hospitalizations. Um, it's easy to do it as it goes along, but even if you went back every three months and just looked back and, and captured that, um, it at least makes it manageable. It's kind of like doing your taxes. You have to gather that information once a year. Make that your medical information that kind of priority for yourself as well. We're going to get into things now that talk a little bit about peace of mind and coping and, and your emotional well-being. And um, there is amazing research that's out there that really speaks to the fact that quieting your mind and the practice of mindfulness can actually be, be beneficial. Um, even just as recent as last week, um, there's been a, 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 the Journal of the American Medical Association published a very extensive review of research on mindfulness meditation on health. And they reached the conclusion that there was evidence to support its effectiveness in reducing anxiety and depression and pain. And there's even been research by, um, a research by a researcher called David Moore. Um, he's out of Northwestern University. And he showed that a weekly practice of mindfulness-based stress management for individuals with MS prevented the development of new brain lesions. And, and we know that that's the marker of the disease's activity in the brain. So, so you know, what the, he also found out with his research is that, that once you stopped, it, 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 it ended. The stress management benefits of that ended. So really making this a part of your day, um, quieting your mind, spending 10 to 15 minutes in your favorite place in a quiet space, um, tuning into sounds and sights and the feelings around you. Um, it's kind of like um, daydreaming, dreaming, you know, and, and sometimes there are intrusive thoughts that, that, that pop into your mind. Um, I don't know about some of you. I, I get a busy mind and there's a, you know, something will come up and it takes you off, off thought. But if you just let that 
thought flow through, acknowledge it and let it go, and bring back your focus to your breathing. Um, it can help you maintain that quietness of your mind. Um, each time you exhale, you know, just feel that sense of relaxation, um, a calm, a mental quietness. You may actually find that quieting your mind might bring energy back into your life as well. We all know about the benefits of gratitude, um, and and you know certainly um, reflecting on one good thing um, uh, at the end of each day before you go to bed at night um, actually has has um, great great benefits. And we know in, in happiness research, it it these types of behaviors of the practice of gratitude are associated with life satisfaction and well being, and. And whether it be um, just keeping a gratitude journal to reflect on the, the blessings you may have in your life or looking back and just being grateful for one thing that happened during the day, um, you know, even the act of writing a gratitude letter. You know, if, if, if you can think of somebody, you know, that, that really you, you're very grateful for. And, and you know, we're in this, this world of email. Um, it's very easy to shoot off an email or, you know, text somebody a message. And, but, but take out a piece of paper. Take out a card. You know, write, it, write down what you're grateful for. Put it in an envelope. Address it. Put a stamp on it. Send it off. That practice of expressing gratitude not only has benefit for the person receiving it, but also for you in, in sending it as well. And then there's this whole aspect of um, forgiveness. And, and, you know, there are people in our lives who may have hurt us in some way, shape, or form, but, but hanging on to that um, anger and hanging on to um, that hurt really is an emotional drain. And, and, and as Anne started with this whole presentation, this is really about fortifying you and finding practices that, that, that can help, help fortify you and, and b fuel your battery. Um, your battery gets drained um, emotionally, and, and um, anger around this can, can be that constant drain. Um, so, so try to find ways. You don't have to forget, but try to find ways to let go. And spending time with people you love. That might seem like an obvious um, statement, but how many times do we have these emotional vampires in our lives that tend to just capitalize on our time and, 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 and just drain us? Um, you know, there's, there's evidence that toxic people, you know, is not only harmful to your immune system and your health, but research also shows it impacts how long people will live. Um, you know, there's been some interesting research that took a look at um, about 820 healthy working adults, and they looked at them over 20 years. And after controlling all other health risk factors, if they went to look at um, those that were more likely to die in those 20 years, those individuals had the least supportive relationships in their work environment, were two, almost two and a half times more likely to die um, during those 20 years. Um, seems pretty dramatic, um, but it's a, a great reason to make sure that we make time for the people we love and the people we want to spend time with and get rid of those emotional drains or vampires. Um, you know, it's also important to express your needs and wants of others. Um, it, it's, you'll get more of what you want out of a relationship. Um, it, it really, you know, you, you might be surprised how much people want to be a part and want to help and just don't know how. And so if you need something for someone, you know, get it out there. It, it's only dumb luck that someone might figure, want to, you know, figure out that, that what's going on and how they can address that. Um, and again, connect with people who energize you, those, those people that fuel you rather than drain you. And you know what? It's okay sometimes to tell someone no. Um, you know, we're always there for your boss, your mother, your kids, your friends, you know. Can you, can you help uh, make cookies? Can you bring something to this meeting? Um, how often do you really feel overcommitted? And it's okay sometimes just to say no and really make time for you. You know, again, as we go back to the theme of where we started, this is about you and finding the pockets of freedom where you can be more yourself and do the things that you like to do and that truly fuel you.
understand your limits, know your boundaries, and be self-accepting. Be honest with yourself. Some habits we have in our daily life are actually activities that train us and need to be let go. I'm going to say now, don't focus on the end result and focus on the process. If you're trying something new, don't worry about the outcome. Remind yourself of why you're going through this, what your intentions are, and to enjoy the journey. And add more laughter in your day. Be able to laugh at yourself as well as laugh with others. Denise just was making a point of that. It's so important that we connect and we can relax and let go and be able to move on and not get hung up on these little itty bitty things that can really take control over our days. A way to help understanding your limits is to do some journaling. Denise was talking about reflecting and having gratitude. Another way of journaling is looking back at your day and to see how were you self-nurturing today? Were you making progress to some of the changes you're wanting to incorporate? How can you keep your energy flowing? Journaling can really help you make these changes happen. Value people, products, and services. And, and you know, sometimes we need a little help. And and rather than thinking of it as um, you know a, a weakness and 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 needing to call on someone or something for help, instead look at it as making intelligent decisions that will make your life easier and safer. Um, you know, I think about um, as, as I talk about shopping, and and that could be energy draining. Um, think about using a grocery on um, online grocery delivery service. You know, if you don't have the energy to gro go grocery shopping, or you don't have the help of a friend, it's a great resource you can take advantage of. Um, and talked about tools that can make life easier. Um, there's a lot of different products and services out there, and there's a lot of people probably in your life as well that are willing to help. Let them do it. Write it down. This gives us a greater sense of ownership and motivation. Reflect and be attentive. Daily check-ins give us the ability to pay attention to ourselves. And if we find a problem, we find it quicker and it's smaller, and thus it's easier to change or to, quote, fix. The larger the problem, the more overwhelming, and you feel more defeated in making your changes or adding activities that don't seem to be working, right? Problem solving becomes a regular basis, and this empowers us to be less emotionally charged and more matter-of-fact of approach. Explain when you need to. Educate yourself. Educate others. Use resources. As you all well know, the National MS Society, the Can Do Center, are incredible resources to deepen your knowledge and educate family, friends, coworkers, neighbors. Take advantage. The more you know, the more control you have. And don't expect others to know how you are feeling. Never underestimate the power of talking to others. The more people know, and I'm not saying you have to be an open book, but just educating about how you're feeling, the symptoms of MS, when it's appropriate and you feel it's a barrier, the better they are going to be able to understand and get closer to you. Because being a good communicator involves taking some risks. Be open in expressing your feelings and how MS may affect you because, you know, you do feel vulnerable and fearful. Find the courage to take risks with people who have meaning in your life. And remember, worrying about what people think never brings energy or freedom. You matter the most. That's what this talk is all about, to keep it going, to keep motivated, Focus on yourself. Maybe make a motto for yourself, a, a saying that you can put up on your, the mirror in your bathroom or stick it in your pocket or have it at your computer, a saying that keeps you going that you want to live by. Give yourself affirmation. Appreciate what you are capable of today. Affirm your successes, big and small. 
ooze with confidence, even if you don't feel it, because studies do show that smiling, as Denise was just talking about, and laughing and connecting, po projecting a positive vibe can affect your brain chemistry and boost your mood in the moment. Respect yourself and commit to this. And when negativity creeps in, shift your perception. We talked about journaling. Maybe even talking to a wise friend can help you challenge the kind of self-critical thinking that can so easily creep into our heads. Stop blaming and have the should statements. It is common to make excuses and blame the MS for not getting involved. But in conclusion, remarkable things happen when we are energized mentally and emotionally. And finally, we have shared a bunch of information with all of you this evening. And, and hopefully there have been some strategies and tips and hints and ideas that, that really have been helpful for you. And so now it's time to zero in on a plan. This is where you can look at the things that you can do to bring balance back into everyday life with MS. Where can you refocus? Where can you redirect and re? Um, re-engage around the things that matter most. Where, you, where can you prioritize and make sure the things that matter most come first? What can you just eliminate and get rid of? Just dump it. <laughs> How can you consolidate or streamline things in your life to make life easy? So um, the slides that we have for you here tonight will be shared post-program. And you can go back and take a look at these things and perhaps take a uh, um, take away a plan that can work for you. So at this point in time, I think we're going to open it up for questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Denise and Anne. I know that I got a lot of tips out of that, including starting a, a workout plan for myself that I keep putting off. But um, there were so many great uh, tips in there. And um, as Denise mentioned, we will be sharing those slides with um, all of all of you who are joining us this evening. Um, we haven't received too many questions, um, but we did receive one. Um, and the question is, do you have options for PT or OT evaluations for people who don't have health coverage for those valuable resources? So. And, and you know, that, that's an excellent question. Um, what I ref will tell you to do is hopefully you have an MS chapter in your area. Call that uh, your chapter and talk to a social worker. Or if you don't, you can talk, you know, go online and look into the National MS Society website and they'll direct you to someone you can contact. Uh, I know that there's a lot of grant money and as well as not only having an evaluation or having uh, services, there's adaptive equipment that you can loan, that you can have for a while. There's an incredible resource right there in your chapter. And that social worker you talk to will help find out where the money is at or what services and how they can get that evaluation done for you. Again, if you are in a, uh, a business that has any type of human resources, nowadays that human resource department does provide these evaluations in your workspace. But I think the question was more for home. So hopefully that will help. Great. Thanks, Anne. Um, Another question that just came in, um, can massage therapy help people with MS in any way? Do you want to take that, Denise? Well, we do know that massage can be very helpful, um, perhaps in the control of spasticity. Um, so for those of you who might have muscle spasticity, um, massage is also a great way to um, quiet the mind, relax the body. So, um, so um, there certainly can be a, a number of, of benefits for massage um, uh, and individuals with MS. I think if you're looking for a massage therapist, do see if your massage therapist um, is familiar with working with MS. Um, uh, again, the National MS Society could be a resource for you there as well. Um, uh, just because I'm working with spasticity, um, you just need to be conscious of, of certain things. So, um, but, but massage therapy is certainly one of those things that you can take control of in your life with MS. Excellent. Thank you, Denise. Um, and one final question. I'm not sure if this is something that you all can answer, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. Um, 
this uh, this person is concerned with sharing her personal medical information with her supervisor, and she wants to know what she can do to protect her position. Well, maybe I'll take a start. Um, you don't have to mm -hmm. share your medical information with your, your supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, if you are needing um, any sort of um, accommodation, medical accommodation, um, you or a reasonable accommodation in doing your job or work, um, you don't have to disclose that you you um, have MS. You um, just need to be able to explain what the accommodation is needed and for what um, circumstance. So let's just say if you are dealing with fatigue, um, you would need to explain that that um, you are looking for a staggered work schedule to um, to manage fatigue, but you don't need to explain what causes that fatigue or um, that that MS is a part of the condition that's contrib that may be contributing to that. Um, so so you don't have to disclose that medical information to you, to your your supervisor. Excellent. Thanks, Denise. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and another, just to add on to that, again, if you could call the MS chapter and talk to a social worker that can guide you through this process to know your rights and to help you guide each step of the way, because that's, that's important. Great. Um, and one final question. Um, this woman wants to know, and this might be good for you, Denise, um, what types of foods uh, can help to boost her immune system effectively if there are foods out there to, to help boost her immune system? So I think there's a couple different things that you need to, um, when you think about boosting the immune system, I think we have to stop down and take a look at what is going on with the immune system in individuals with MS. And, and if you actually look at that, um, there, um, there's the... Um, circumstance where you have this overactive immune system. And so um, there, there has to be a little bit of caution around the, the concept of boosting the immune system. Now, that being said, there are foods that certainly boost the immune system um, and have um, known benefits for um, MS. And, and we're learning more and more about um, uh, the nutritional aspects of uh, or the role that diet might play in um, in and influencing the progress of the disease. Antioxidants, for instance, are um, uh, immune-boosting um, nutrients. These are um, foods that are brightly colored fruits and vegetables. You will find antioxidants in, in um, orange, uh, yellow, red, blue, dark green fruits and, and, and vegetables. And these, these nutrients play an important role not just in boosting the immune system but also um, in um, um, fighting free radicals in the body that can actually do damage to um, myelin, to um, the nerves, and to the blood-brain barrier and, and actually are part of a vicious circle of the, the disease process in MS. So those types of things, those antioxidants, um, are great to have in the diet, but not necessarily in large doses. It wouldn't be something that I would recommend um, supplementing. I wouldn't recommend supplementing vitamin C, vitamin E, or, or um, vitamin A or beta carotene. Those are your antioxidant-rich vitamins. I would recommend getting them from natural sources, your food, and, and have the benefit of the, the phytonutrients like lutein and lycopene and other um, flavonoids and other nutrients that, that are there that have and boost the antioxidant-rich power of foods. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Thanks, Denise. Um, and so I think those are all the questions that we'll take uh, for now before we run out of time. Um, please don't be discouraged, though. Uh, we do have um, a portal called Ask the Can Do Team at our website, um, and it's where you can um, uh, submit your questions online, um, and they will be answered by um, a staff member or by a programs consultant. Um, and some are published uh, live online for the public to see, or they'll be answered privately to you. Um, so please check that out on our website. It's a great resource that we have. Um, and we also have um, a can-do library, which are um, library articles that are written by our consultants, um, and they're on all sorts of topics um, um, that can-do MS just talks about. And, and you can go to our website to look for those articles and, and review and read at your pleasure.
Um, so before I end, I did want to um, talk about our Vertical Express events for 2014. This is our flagship fundraising event, and it's our oldest event. It's, uh, it was started by our founder, Jimmy Huga, in 1985. And this event is a series of on-snow fundraising activities for skiers and snowboarders of all ages and abilities. And they're held at four different mountains each year. And so this year we'll be at Vail, uh, in Crystal Mountain, Washington, Squaw Valley, and Schweitzer Mountain, Idaho. So if you all are in any of those areas, please feel free to check out our website and um, participate with us in this fun, uh, fun event. So our next webinar uh, for February will be on February 11th. It's our kind of Valentine's Day romance topic on keeping your relationship alive, <laughs> the physical and emotional aspects of intimacy and MS. The emotional is just as important as the physical. Uh, and our presenters are Pat Kennedy and Rosalind Kalb, a psychologist and registered nurse for that evening. Um, so again, you can just visit our website and register for uh, that webinar. And um, you know, to remind you again, you will be receiving a uh, copy of tonight's slides. And uh, the recording of this webinar will be available tomorrow on our website. So I thank you so much, Denise and Ann, and for everyone participating with us. And we will talk with you guys soon.